Hello listeners and welcome to today's Cult News. I'm your speaker Casey, host of the Cult World podcast, and for this segment I will be doing another Cult News roundup of recent things in the Cult News. Airing now on FX and Hulu is a documentary titled The Secrets of Hillsong, exploring one of America's most successful megachurches and the investigative reporting that led to the dismissal of two prominent pastors. Also available on Channel 4 now is the Rebecca Vardy, Jehovah's Witnesses and Me documentary. Rebecca Vardy goes on a personal journey through her difficult history with the Jehovah's Witnesses, meeting former members and uncovering secret documents. Not only this, but coming June 2nd is Shiny Happy People, Dug a Family Secrets, a limited docuseries exposing the truth beneath the wholesome Americana surface of reality TV's favourite mega-family, the Duggars, and the radical organisation behind them, the Institute in Basic Life Principles. As details of the family and their scandals unfold, we realise they're part of an insidious, much larger threat already in motion, with democracy itself in peril. After Ginger Duggar's recent memoir release, it has been announced that within Shiny Happy People, an Amazon exclusive, it is expected that Jill Duggar may also speak out, according to aceshowbiz.com. I am yet to watch any of these documentaries, but I truly do plan on watching them and offering my feedback, perhaps in my upcoming 12-hour live stream on June the 2nd. Reviews for The Resurrection of Charles Manson, an upcoming thriller, have started coming out. PopHorror.com states one of the most notorious murders in American history was committed by the Manson family cult. The conspiracies that followed the murderous cult post-1969 spawned many rumours, books, documentaries and internet sleuths connecting the dots to Son or Sons of Sam and to the Unibomber and even the CIA. In The Resurrection of Charles Manson, director Remy Grillo, with writers Brev Moss and Josh Plus, illustrates the underground connections of the sleepy stragglers of the Manson family cult and their mission to conjure up their lost messiah, Charles Manson. This is set to be released May 29th and again is on my list of things to watch. The list just grows. Yahoo News released an article stating that Quentin Tarantino revealed on a podcast that fictional character Rick Dalton, Leonardo DiCaprio's character from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, has died at the age of 90. Strange, but rather fitting for Tarantino, and very meta when you consider that Leonardo DiCaprio was playing Dalton, who was most famous in the film for being an actor himself in the movie. Let's not forget that Into the Clearing is also coming on May 24th, a film adapted from a book where a woman is forced to confront the nightmares of her past in order to stop a secret cult intent on gathering children to fulfil its master's plan. The New York Times has reported that there has been a recent stage production based on the Sarah Lawrence cult led by Larry Ray, with the article stating new play looks for dark humour beneath the Sarah Lawrence sex cult ordeal. A small production that involves faculty and graduates largely mirrors Lawrence Ray's years-long exploitation of vulnerable students. Some of his victims object. And I'm not surprised. And the wording sex call ordeal, not ideal. With a recent book released by Emma Klein, a Charles Manson thriller with the blurb reading Northern Carolina during the violent end of the 1960s. At the start of summer, a lonely and thoughtful teenager, Evie Boyd, sees a group of girls in the park and is immediately caught by their freedom, their careless dress, their dangerous aura of abandon, and soon Evie is in the thrall to Suzanne, a mesmerising older girl, and is drawn into the circle of a soon-to-be infamous cult and the man who is its charismatic leader. Hidden in the hills, their sprawling ranch is eerie and run down, but to Evie it is exotic, thrilling, charged. A place where she feels desperate to be accepted. As she spends more time away from her mother and the rhythms of her daily life, and as her obsession with Suzanne intensifies, Evie does not realise. She is coming closer and closer to unthinkable violence, and to the moment in a girl's life when everything can go horribly wrong. So much cult material, and let's see how accurate the depictions are now that there is so much academia out there for producers and writers to access. Not to mention the sensitivity and compassion that should be exercised towards those that have survived high demand, cult-like environments, exploitation and horrible abuses. MENAFN.com has reported recently that moral satanic panic is on the rise and that LGBTQIA plus rights are being targeted. Part of the article reads, Drag queens around the world are currently being accused of grooming children through drag storytime events. 
These accusations curiously associate public book reading with child sex offending. We know from decades of research and inquiries, the places that young people are most at risk of sexual victimisation are their home or in an institution of care, such as school, an orphanage or church. The people that most often offend against children are family members and care providers. However, this recent panic about drag queens reading in public libraries is actually typical in the history of child sexual abuse. This history has involved repeated moral panics that distract from the alarming data regarding child abuse in the home. Instead, these narratives locate the threat to children outside of the home, to gay men and stranger danger, and even satanic ritualistic abuse, rather than confronting the situations and protecting children where they are most at risk. Girls United released a piece recently titled The Misplaced Story of Grit and Grind by Shelby Smith, with a part of the article breaking down MLMs and their cult-like qualities as described by Dr Stephen Hassan, leading cult expert. One section reads, Broken promises, flashy lifestyles with no proof of income, and cult-like membership tactics. That's what comes to mind when reflecting on the Forex phase, During this time, people would promote joining academies to learn how to trade and build wealth when the focus was really on recruitment into the academy and not so much training to trade. Personal stories are included within this article, which I will link in the episode description. Mondak.com has a small section on coercive control in Australia that reads, The legislation that deals with family and domestic violence in Queensland was recently amended to incorporate coercive control. In this video, special counsel Leanne Murphy talks about the changes and what they could mean for your family law matter. What this means in terms of criminal law and criminal acts will become clearer as time goes on and things become cemented. And lastly, WZAK Cleveland has reported on the recent controversial events in an American middle school when a teacher was suspended for allowing a pupil to wear a Ku Klux Klan white robe whilst doing a school piece on KKK Grand Wizard Nathan Bedford Forrest. The article positions itself as trying to look at both sides of the argument. Students were told to prepare essays on historical figures with costumes in keeping with the assignment. Some argued that the people was not wrong in the way that they presented their work and that we should not forget the disgraceful and unforgivable parts of our history. Others have said that it is completely inappropriate and extremely racist and should never be allowed full stop, let alone in a school setting. What are your thoughts on this? That is the end of today's cult news. Join me tomorrow for more. I'm your speaker, Casey, host of the Cult Vault podcast.